Hello and welcome to this video on sack. This is one of many names for wine with spirits added. You may know it as fortified wine, port, sherry and wine vermouth. It was usually made by the addition of distilled wine in the form of brandy. Sack is a useful development in wine making as it helps to preserve wine. It also imparts new flavours as you are combining multiple products. Extra alcohol from the distilled wine kills the yeast and leaves behind extra sugar. The combination of extra wine and unfermented sugar makes sack extremely viscous by comparison to normal wine or distilled spirits. Fortified wine or sack can be made in either a dry or sweet style. You'll often find it's medium sweet to medium dry. This can vary from one product category to the next, but as a general rule, that will cover most of the flavours. Sack can be useful as a way of rescuing otherwise less desirable or viable vintages. This is done by distilling a part of it and combining it with a variety of other vintages. This blending produces more desirable flavours. The advantages of adding alcohol to the wine beyond preservation is the way it stops yeast from fermenting any further sugar. This means a dry wine won't become any more dry and tart. An overly sweet wine won't produce an excess of alcohol, or alternatively, simply become untenable. Many fortified wines undergo aging in wood. The time they are aged will vary, but in general, you'll find the cheaper it is the less time it's been stored for. The aging is done in oak barrels. The particular oak barrel will vary based on where that's been purchased from or produced in. For example, Spanish sack will often have American oak, whereas others will rely on French or other European oak barrels. As a consequence of this aging process, aeration can occasionally be useful. There are four major types. The first is Madeira, and this is made from white fortified wine. It's generally produced in Portugal. Then you have port wine. This is perhaps the best known. This is also made in Portugal. Then you have Sherry. This is yet another well-known product, generally produced in Spain. Finally, there's Vermouth. Vermouth itself is not particularly well known, but you may know one of its more common applications, the other ingredient in martini. To get vermouth, you need to produce a low alcohol white wine. For a sweeter version, normally something like a sugar syrup is added to the white wine, and then extra alcohol is added to this. When we're talking about something like a red vermouth, this can be generated by the addition of flavors or botanicals. Sometimes red wine is used instead, or even synthetic caramel colours. The rose-coloured vermouth is a combination of red and white wine as a base, then with the flavours and alcohol added later. Sherry itself is made in a particular region of Spain. The name itself is a bastardization of the Spanish pronunciation of this region. As a consequence, producers in this region are actively protecting their name and the origin of it. As a general rule, in Spain itself, only three types of white grape are used for making sherry. In other countries, where the name sherry is not supposed to be used due to name of origin, they use alternatives. Within Spain itself, the three grape varieties are the Palomino, the Pedro Zuminas, and the Moscatel. Sherry is fortified using a distillation of this wine product. This is mixed with an older, more robust version of sherry from a previous batch, normally in a 50% to 50% ratio. This produces a mitad y mitad, or half and half. This is then added to the current batch of sherry. This creates the proper proportions of all the flavours. The reason they do it in a two-stage process is not necessarily that obvious, but a strong alcohol can cause the sherry when it's in its early, undeveloped stages to shock and become spoiled. This owes to unanticipated chemical reactions. Then we have port, and port again comes from Portugal. 
it can be divided into two broad categories, those that have matured in glass and those that matured in wooden barrels. The two approaches lead to very different chemical reactions. Those that are in a glass vessel undergo reductive aging. This is because there is no air. This leads to a very pale colored port. And then you have changes to the flavor palette and often it is less harsh and simple tasting. When you age it within a wooden barrel, there's a degree of permeability and air will move in there. This means you get the oxidative aging. Port that has been aged with an oxidative process often comes out with less color. They also tend to lose what is called the angel's share. We've mentioned this before with aging in oak barrels. That is the small amount of alcohol that is lost to evaporation, and as a result, a reduction in the total volume within the barrel. This makes port that has been aged within a wooden barrel more viscous and generally slightly more sweet. When you get your fortified wine, sack, or whatever it has been labelled as, it's likely to come in a glass bottle. The unopened bottle of wine can generally be stored in a cool, dark location for an extended period. It's preferable not to leave it on an open environment like a shelf or a rack once it's been opened. The opening of the bottle leads to oxidation very quickly, and so you'll find that if you keep it out in the open, within a few months it will generally go bad. The unopened bottle of sherry, port, wine, or whatever it happens to be, will sit somewhere between that of wine and liquor in its stability. Long term, wine can gain flavour. Short term, it's useful to drink. Liquor, on the other hand, tends to be better the earlier you drink it, as all the aging processes have finished. So once it's been taken out of the wood barrel, liquor is best consumed, whereas wine bottles can continue to age to some degree. Sherry will only age so much, as will be the case with port, vermouth, and so on. When you open it up, you need to store it in the fridge, preferably upright. This will minimize the amount of oxidation that can happen. This has been a short and simple summary of SAC, fortified wine, or whatever you want to call it. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.